Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from the John Isner Slice Serve to help improve your slice serve. Now, this video is courtesy of Essential Tennis. You can see their icon right there. Thanks, guys, for allowing me to use this video. If you are not a subscriber of, your, of theirs, you need to, so click the link in the description below. So, the slice serve, this is where you get the ball curving, and as a right-hander, you can really hit the ball out wide on the deuce side. Lefties typically do this really well on the ad side. So the key here, let's just get right to the contact, is you have to make sure that you are swinging up, leading with the edge of the racket. So if you don't look like this prior to hitting the ball, you're really not going to be able to hit a slice serve. A lot of players feel that when they hit the slice serve, they're supposed to, you know, curl around the ball. That's not what happens when you hit a slice serve. Let me just put this in slow motion here so you can watch this. This is the movement on a slice serve. This is called pronation. This is where your racket, if you're right-handed, prior to contact, will be facing to the left. And then after contact the strings face to the right. In fact, John is so flexible that not only does his racket face off to the right when he's done, his racket actually opens up. It's unreal how flexible his arm is. But the idea is simple. When you, it's not easy to do, but the idea is simple. When you are leading up to hit the ball or swinging up to hit the ball, you need to lead with the front edge of the racket. Now, that requires a continental grip. That's the whole reason you want to use a continental grip. Now, if you're not familiar with the continental, it is when you take the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad, and you place those two spots on panel number two. Now, this is if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, this is your panel number two. Again, you're gonna put the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad on panel two as a lefty. And obviously you'll be using your left hand for those two spots, but that's the continental grip. And the continental grip helps you lead up toward the ball with the edge of the racket. Now, why is that important? Well, in order to hit slice, you need two things to occur. You need your strings to face in one direction and you need your racket to travel in another. I want you to notice where his racket is traveling after he hits the ball. He is not swinging toward his target. The racket and his arm are traveling off to the right. So I'm going to draw a line. Let me see exactly where that is. Okay. Just had to see where that was. So the ball is going to go like this. Watch the ball. Now watch his racket. Look where his racket's traveling. Racket's going like this. He's not swinging the direction he wants the ball to go. In fact, before I made this video, I paused at this point right here, just kind of looking at it. If I were to show you a still picture like this, you, you would almost think like he swung and missed. Like, wait a minute, he's, he's swinging over here and the ball's like, he swung and missed. This ball's just going to hit the ground. But it's the, you don't swing the direction you want the ball to go. You point your strings where you want the ball to go and you swing the direction you want the ball to spin. In golf, I believe they call this the face sends it, the path bends it, meaning the strings of your racket will send the ball where you want it to go. But because you're swinging in a different direction, that's what gets the ball to spin. I want you to go out and film yourself serving. Let's go over some really basic things that he does so, so well. He tosses with a straight arm. You can see his arm staying straight the whole time. He's not bending his elbow. He's not bending, you know, from the wrist. He's not rolling the ball off the fingertips. He's literally just almost not even tossing the ball. He's more placing it in the air. When he bends his hitting arm, you can see this great shoulder tilt. His tossing hand is higher. This is absolutely phenomenal. His tossing hand is higher than the tip of his racket. This is just what's called the trophy position, and I absolutely love this. Look at his knee bend. He coincides the leg 
drive with hitting the birthday hat. So notice his racket coming in over his head, hitting the birthday hat, right? So if you can wear a birthday hat and knock it off, notice his leg drive is occurring at that moment. That's when you want to get the leg drive to occur because that accentuates the racket drop. The racket drop becomes much greater when the legs are going up as the racket's going down because it really stretches the shoulder and arm and the racket really accelerates around. When he's going up, you can see his tossing arm is beginning to tuck into his body. That actually helps slow his body's rotation down. You know, the body's rotating and your elbow, notice his elbow goes like this. Watch his hitting elbow go like this. His elbow's coming up. That's the throwing motion. But then when his body slows down, that's actually when the racket accelerates even more. So it's important that you are tucking your tossing arm in against your body. Again, play, I'm sure in the comments, someone's going to tell me, no, that's going to make him spin faster. And that's what you want. No, you want your body rotation to slow down. That actually is a reactive break and helps accelerate the racket. But this right here, you need to go out and film yourself and get into this position. You could even practice just hitting serves with the edge of the racket. That's a great way just to practice the continental grip and, and getting into the supinated position. Supinated meaning your strings are facing off to the side. And then as you approach the ball, you will turn the forearm. You can see at contact, he has this great angle between the arm and the racket. You want this difference in the, in the arm and racket. You don't want the racket straight up above your hand, but rather you want it slightly on the inside. And then you turn the forearm. You can see his strings, again, are facing left prior to contact and then facing to the right after contact. Now, he is rotating 180 degrees, but how much is the racket rotating prior to contact? That's the key, right? So he is not rotating the racket 90 degrees. That right there would be uh, turning the racket 90 degrees from this position relative to this position, but he's turning the racket. Let's say, uh, I'm going to say that's 70 degrees that his racket is turning 75, 80 degrees. Then the last five degrees happens after there. And then the rest of the 90 to make it 180 gets to there. So you are still at contact. And this is how you get spin at contact. He has the right edge of the racket in front of the left edge. So you want to turn the racket, but you still want the racket, the right edge, if you're right-handed, to be in front at contact. That is what's going to create the side spin on the ball. And then, because it's you don't just turn and hope for the best. It's calculated. You turn the forearm. You can see his arm. Look at his arm right here. Look at his arm turning. You can see the whole arm rotating as he's hitting. Look at that. It's a mate. Look at his elbow. You can see his elbow right there. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And it's all originating. You can see his, his whole arm from the shoulder is rotating. And now his strings are facing off to the right as he hits. This is the fastest way to move your racket. This is natural. This is what court, you know, football quarterbacks do, baseball pitchers. You make this move in a throwing motion. It's natural. Strings facing off to the left, strings facing off to the right. That is what's going to produce a ton of power into the ball. And you can see when he's done, again, his racket was traveling this way, and the ball is an out wide serve. Look at his, look at the serve go out wide. It actually leaves using the single sideline, not the service line, and goes out. So go out and practice your serves. Please go out and practice. Use a straight arm to toss. Bend your knees and get the racket to shave right in over your head, knocking off the birthday hat. Look to see that as the racket hits the birthday hat, the leg drive is occurring. Make sure that your elbow is coming up. It's a great idea to learn how to throw a football, to learn that. So you can lead with the point of the football and throw a spiral. Make sure that you're using a continental grip and practice swinging up with the edge of the racket. And the edge of the racket that is leading... That's the edge at contact that's going to be in front. But don't swing where you want the ball to go. Don't swing the direction you want the ball to go. Point your strings that direction. But if you're right-handed, swing to the right of your target and follow through after contact way to the right. I mean, it's amazing how the ball's going that way and his racket's going this way. 
He's not swinging the direction he wants the ball to go. And when you're doing that, the string should change 180 degrees, at least. You can see John Isner, his racket turns even more. That's how flexible he is. You would see Sampras and Becker doing the same thing. So go out and practice your serves. If you can copy some of the ideas you just learned from John Isner's serve, and you don't need to be six foot ten. there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.